faith does not work when you take the word of God for granted. If you have love in your heart, you cannot take advantage of your parents or take advantage of your children or the people God has put under your care. Welcome to the ministry of Festus Sago, the senior pastor of House of Praise Bible Church. Every human being is a product of what? Of love. When you come to the presence of God, be quiet to learn something that will bring transformation. If I have love, I will not be stealing in any case. We believe that this message will be a blessing to your life. everybody one more time greetings from me we give God praise and we give him all the honor that belong to him because though we cannot meet in the churches we can meet in our homes it's a marvelous thing I send my regards and my greetings to every one of you for your patience in this trying period or uh, and your diligence to serve the Lord and to gather in homes, especially in our home cell centers, to worship the Lord, since at this time we cannot meet in our churches. Nevertheless, we, we give God praise for everybody who is encouraged, who has not turned his back against the Lord because of the things we are passing through. Father, we want to thank and bless your name one more time. We thank you for being God. We thank you for who you are, the endless God, the beginningless God, the limitless God, the kind God, the holy God, the first and the last, the one whose name is the I am. You are good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the grace of salvation. Thank you for giving us Jesus, your only begotten Son, who died on the cross for our sins, and he rose again after three days and three nights. And the Bible says, as many as believe in him, to them he has given the authority, the power, the right to become, to be called, sons of God. People who were not born by human desire, people whose relationship is not based on human blood, but people who have been born by the power of the Holy Spirit, when they turned their hearts to you and opened their hearts to you to receive you as Lord and Savior, and they have been given the Holy Spirit to authenticate that these are genuine children of God. And we thank you that even though the world is in such a tribulation, challenges every day, nevertheless, our God is good. You protect us. You deliver us. You comfort us. You provide for us. We hallow your name. And so for that one more time, we thank you for giving us the grace to gather in our homes to celebrate today, being Sunday, to worship you. We know that the day belongs to you. Every day, we worship you on Sunday. We worship you also on Saturday. We worship you every day. Because when you have given us the Holy Spirit, we maintain this relationship with you. We belong to you entirely. Thank you. We thank you for your word. 
We thank you for every person all over the world who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for those who love him. We thank you for those who admire him. We thank you for those who adore him. We thank you for those who put their trust in him. Even though they face temptations and trials and persecutions all over the world, nevertheless, the church is one. We are the body of Christ, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against us. Thank you. Jesus is the rock upon which the church has been built. We are the building blocks of the church of Jesus Christ. We are peculiar people. We are a holy nation. We are the called out ones. So both in our homes and anywhere we gather all over the world, receive our praise, receive our worship, receive the honor we give to you, and bless us as we wait for the coming of Jesus. If he delays his coming, give us the strength to forever worship you until he comes. Thank you. We are partakers of this glory. We are partakers of the kingdom of God that shall be revealed soon and sooner than the people of the world can ever believe. In Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, it is such a wonderful thing, one more time, to be in the presence of the Most High God. It's not easy these days with the pandemic all over the world, but we thank God for his mercy. We thank God for protecting us, all who believe all over the world. In this city of Wari, where we live, in the whole nation, in the continent of Africa, in all the earth, there are people who are trusting God. There are people who are not frustrated by the reason of what is going on because we know that we are in the end times. And so we thank God for keeping us. We still thank God for all the people who are putting their lives on the line, uh, health care providers and doctors and nurses and pharmacists and every person making contributions in different ways to see that this pandemic uh, will come to an end. We say that God will bless every person. God will keep every person. And above all things, that God will give every person the opportunity to know that Jesus Christ alone is Lord and is Savior. And in him alone we are complete, who is the head of all principalities and powers. Because by him, God the Father created all things. He is the one who is our Savior. So anywhere you are hearing the sound of our voice, anywhere in the earth, thank you for all the efforts you are making. Thank you for all the contributions. Thank you for the goodwill you have. Thank you for putting your life on the line. Thank you for helping people. Are you in government? Are you uh, charity organizations, NGOs? Are you working from your homes? Whoever you are, white or black, rich or small, but you are doing everything you can do in your own nation to bring this pandemic to an end. May God bless you. May God bless you and your home. And may God give you grace to receive eternal life. This morning, I was still on bed. I woke up early, as usual. By 1 a.m., I was still, I was already up. Then I spent some time doing some things here and there, you know, praying as it is our habit to be in the presence of God. And I went back to lie on the sofa, and suddenly I heard this voice in my heart, through my ears, saying, Cheer up. I have overcome the world. I stood up immediately. I said, Lord, what are you saying to me? He said, tell the people to be of good cheers in this tribulation because he has overcome the world. And I know that this can be found in the book of John in chapter number 16, verse number 33. Jesus said to his disciples at the time when he was on earth, before he was crucified and went to heaven, to prepare a place for us according to his word, the book of John 14. He said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome 
the world. He said, in the world, you will have tribulation. And that's what we are going through at this moment. All over the world, this tribulation has come at a time. It is not in a segment of society. This tribulation, this particular tribulation, this coronavirus, whether manipulated by human beings, only God knows. Whether it is physical, only God knows. Whether it is nature fighting against us, only God knows. But we know that all things are working together to bring this trouble. Climate change is involved. Natural uh, disasters are involved. The earth is resisting the inhumanity, the injustice, and the immorality of human beings. And the earth, the creation is crying and resisting us. And other human beings are doing their own. People who think they are scientists will we we bless God for them. And people who do so many things. These things come together to work against us. And this is why we are in this tribulation. Tribulation means trouble. Tribulation means suffering. Tribulation means anxiety and sorrow and trial and distress, agony, tragedy, grief, pain, unhappiness, sorrow. Sorrow, sometimes caused by you. Some other times not caused by you. We have tribulation because we are living in a world that is denying God. And why are we really having tribulation? Tribulation is because the people of the earth, they reject truth. Men reject Christ. Men reject God. They reject truth. So we find that the, the major, the principal characteristic of the end time is tribulation. And the Lord warns us about this tribulation in the book of Matthew, chapter number 24. In the book of um, um, Luke, in chapter number 21, and from the book of Revelation, chapter number 6, on to chapter number 18 and 19, when the Lord comes with his sense, we see tribulation and troubles and troubles and troubles. Right now, we, we see that the world leaders are coming together. Right now, they are meeting in, in Belgium sponsored by WHO who they are doing a nice work fine only God knows and they are being sponsored also by Bill Gates and his empire the European Union they are involved Germany is involved France is involved Italy is involved all these European Union nations they are involved Britain is represented in that place and what are they looking for they are looking for a vaccine which they will spread to the whole world to fight this pandemic. Probably Israel will come up with their own. Maybe Israel will even come up before any other person. And the U.S., uh, they are looking for their own solution. And China is looking for their own solution. Meanwhile, China is um, mounting um, cyber uh, attacks against the U.S. Uh, to be able to understand of what they are doing to get their own vaccine. So you see this competition. You see this trouble. You see this fighting. As if they want to divide the world. But we know that Jesus mentioned these things. And as these things are happening, we come into this tribulation. Children, it is proper for us to understand that there will still be more tribulations. If anybody tells you there's, there's going to be a solution found immediately, that's not the truth. Things are changing. Daniel in chapter 12 spoke about this. There will be so much travel, international travels. There will be so much knowledge. People are digging out things. On one side, there are people who even say there's no God. The thieves, the people who are evolutionists. They even forget that Charles Darwin, who is the father of evolution, in his book, Origin of the Species, he mentioned that in the beginning, the creator gave life to one of the primordial forms. Primordial means existing with time, something that came before we, 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 we can record history. Even he himself recognized that there was a creator. 
But today in Ephesus, they tell you there's no creator. These things are working together. So you see, resistance against God, resistance against God. And this resistance against God is creating the tribulation. And people who believe in the Lord, they are going to face tribulations. They are going to face sufferings. The world is going to face sufferings. If you go to the book of Revelation, just look at this in chapter number 6. The Bible says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. Oh. And there was given unto him a great sword. War in the nations, tribal wars, ethnic cleansing, destruction, man turned against his neighbor because they want to exercise power. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and behold, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balance in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hast not the oil and the wine. Poverty and famine. To not hurt the oil and the wine just refers to the fact that in the midst of famine, there will be people who will have so much money. The rich will not go through it. The poor will go through it. So there's still going to be a whole lot of pain. The money you make will not be able to, to buy you the things you need. Especially now that we have the pandemic coronavirus, you see there is oil glut. Nobody is selling oil anymore, especially in nations where they depend upon oil for their revenues. So how are they going to take care of their people when oil is not sold? How are they going to pay government workers? And if government doesn't bring out money, how shall there be money? In the nation you can see what is happening that nations are going to suffer nations that depend on tourism if people are no more traveling nations like Greece Portugal even Israel Israel is better off because Israel sells um, technology and agriculture but there are so many nations that depend upon tourism uh, if people don't travel how would they make money so you are going to see that there is truly going to be great famine. But people who are rich are not going to suffer. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hast not the oil and the wine. So all the wages of a man will not be able to feed him and his family for a week, maybe even for a day. And continuing, the Bible says, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed him, followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with beasts of the earth, hunger, death, confusion. Power was given to this horse and the riders to bring death into the world. And we can see what's happening today. People are dying in their thousands. 
This death does not know big and small. Leaders are dying. Everybody's confused. Ordinary people are dying. The old dying. Sometimes you begin to wonder, has this been crafted? Is the aim to remove elderly people? Is the aim to remove poor nations? Is the aim to remove the blacks? Only God knows these things. Who are behind this manipulation? You could see that here, the Bible says, power was given. In other words, people have power to do this evil. In other words, these things are not just happening. Some people are behind it. Some people are behind this devastation. Some people are behind this destruction. Some people are behind this confusion. What are they looking for? They want to reign. They want to rule. They are creating anxiety all over the world. And in the circumstance, the Lord still says to those who believe in him, Cheer up. I have overcome the world. Cheer up. I have overcome the world. Somehow, they will not succeed. Why will they not succeed? I will show you a place that you may not understand very properly. They will not uh, succeed because even though that these things are going on, the Bible lets us know in the book of Thessalonians, patiently, go to this place and see what the Bible says. It will bring comfort to you. Paul was writing to the Thessalonians from verse 3. From verse number 1, let's read from verse number 1 of, of Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. A falling away refers to two things. The Greek word for this place is apostasy. Apostasia. Apostasy. Distance. This distance refers to two things. People are in church are distant from God. There will also be a time that the church shall be taken away from the world. So one way you understand that we are in the end time is that so many people are in church, but they are not in God. There is such a long, large, expansive distance between people who are in church of God and the God of this church. Which means that people are following the Lord so religiously. You can see it all over the world. People do not maintain a consistent relationship with God. One-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can see thousands of people in the body of Christ. But they do not know anything even about the end time. They do not have personal fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. They do not have personal encounters with the Lord Jesus Christ. They go to church. They know the rituals. They know the dogmas or the dogmata, if you like. But they do not understand what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches. If you read the book of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, you see the Lord speaking to the church. And each time he will, he will end by saying, He who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Sometimes God's people don't know that the Spirit of God is saying something. The Spirit of God is revealing the end time to us. The Spirit of God is letting us know that this is a time of trouble. Nations will be in trouble. 
believers will be in trouble. Unbelievers will be in trouble. But we know this. We are the people who are in the inside of, in the circle of God, to understand what is going on. Our problem is that although we are in the church and God has given us the truth, knowledge of the truth, we are not consistently pursuing God. Instead, we are worshiping men of God. Instead, we are putting our faith and confidence in men of God. Instead, we believe only in our prophets. And sometimes we begin to resist government. And this resistance will not work. What works is that we run into the Lord Jesus. This is why he said, cheer up. Be of good cheers. Only I, Jesus, I have conquered the world. It is only in me that you will conquer. Because in the world you are going to have tribulation. And I see this world this tribulation. Just wait and think for a moment. When this coronavirus will be over, for now, a solution will be found. Money has been given. The European Union, they want to bring in a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of, um, hundreds of billions of, uh, of euro, that they may sit together and see what they will do to build up the economy of the European Union. Meanwhile, the leadership of the US, they will no more be funding or uh, WHO. As they pulled backwards, China stepped in, and China says now they will step up their funding of uh, of who WHO to the tune of eight hundred million dollars a year. So you see this juggling, this juggling everywhere. You see this trouble. You see this race. They are running a race. Who will bring the 5G? They are running the race. Who will bring the vaccine? The European Union won with UN, the United Nations. The European Union united also with who? The European Union united with UNICEF. The powers of the East, China and Russia, won. They come down to the Middle East, China and Russia and Iran, and some nations that are subject to Iran, they are one group. The European Union and the UNO, one group. Uh, the US, they have separated themselves, maybe with Britain, one group. Eventually, whatever happens, whatever happens, a solution will be found because a man will come out, and that's what the Bible is saying. And this, where we are reading, says, when we see the separation between God's people and God himself, then we will know that the revelation of the man of sin is at hand. Paul says, this man of sin opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is so terrible. There are many men of sin, not just the man of sin. The man of sin is going to come. But even today, there are people who think that they are God. You see them in religious quarters, circles. Religious leaders who think that they are bigger than God. You see them among politicians. You see them among scientists. You see them among people who have money. But these people are one day going to come together for the manifestation of the Antichrist or the Antichrist. Paul says, remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Who is the one that is letting? To let here means hinder. Somebody is hindering the manifestation of the Antichrist or the Antichrist. It is good for you to know that the Antichrist is already here. 
in the book of Revelation chapter number 13, the Bible talks about this beast coming out of the sea. And this beast is the Antichrist. And the Bible says his number is 666. But you see, this beast is a person. This beast also is a system. This beast is government. To rise out of the sea means that it is from among human beings. The sea here is not referring to the waters. It is referring to human beings. As you see, you say uh, a, a sea of heads. So the Antichrist is going to come from among men. The anti beast the anti-government, Antichrist government will come from among men. The one world government will come from among men. The one world religion will come from among men. Their system will come from among men. And then we see the groupings coming together. The European Union with the WHO and the United Nations, one group. America has pulled away, don't want to, doesn't want to be so much involved in the things being done by who or by United Nations. Russia is always trying to see how to disintegrate the European Union. Some European Union nations are, are exiting like Britain is going. And after Britain will be gone, so many other nations will leave the European Union. But there will still be the core European Union nations that are going to come together and they are going to do things in this world. Germany is going to be there. France will be there. Italy will be there. Greece will be there. Portugal will be there. Belgium will be there. These nations are going to form the European Union. And as they are working together, for instance, with, with uh, the world bodies and uh, with Bill Gates, it could be, it could be that a system is put into place where you can't function in the world except you bow to this system. If they bring the vaccine today, if they bring the vaccine today, and they say that except you take the vaccine, you are not going to travel, you know what it means. It will make you know that the Antichrist, his days have come upon us. If you don't put the vaccine, you cannot go to school. If you don't put the vaccine, you cannot work in government. If you, if you don't put the vaccine, you cannot travel to any other part of the world. If you're, you don't have the vaccine, you are not going to do business even in your nation. And assuming they bring in the chips and they put the chips in our hands so by the chips they can understand who has taken the vaccine or who has not. You can now understand that the Antichrist has come. The chips in your hand will show who you are. With the chips, you don't need your ATM to withdraw money. You don't need your key to open your door. You don't need anything anymore. Everything has been put into your body. But the chips will come with problems because it will develop a whole lot of radiation in the body and people will be dying off and people will be dying off. As people die off, they will begin to invest in artificial intelligence to take over the human being. And that is when he that lets shall be taken out of the way. That's when the church will leave the earth. The Antichrist, the Antichrist will have a field day for some years, seven years, and Jesus Christ comes down to establish his kingdom. Why do we say this? There's so much that can be taught. Time does not permit us to teach exactly what is going on. But it is you, it is good for you, the child of God, as you study the Bible, look at what's going on. To be able to understand where we are at in this crisis. And yet it is in this crisis that the Lord said, cheer up. You see God giving us hope. You see Jesus giving us hope. Why? Because he said that we are more than conquerors. In Romans chapter 8 verse 37 he said, even though these tribulations will come, 
in different ways, in different forms, we are still more than conquerors. Why are we more than conquerors? Because in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, he said, He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. He that is in you is greater than all these manipulations. He that is in you is greater than all these workings of iniquity. He that is in you is greater than the world system. He that is in you is greater than all the personalities who want to rule and reign. He that is in you, he is above all. And because he's above all, if you are in him, you are above all. He said in the same first uh, epistle of John, chapter 5, in verse four, uh, 4 to 5, he said, we overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith in him who is above all. So in this circumstance, as we are facing these things, because children, it is important for you to know that things are about to change. It will never be the same. The system of the world is changing. Parents know this. Children know this. The system is changing. The ways of running business is changing. Medical ways will change. Governments will change. The people who are looking for power, they are going to use this opportunity, they are going to use this time of coronavirus to grab power, to do the things they have been plotting and planning. And I will tell you why the world will be sold to it. The ordinary person does not understand anything. He cares about his belly. He cares about his family. And he is willing to follow anybody who will bring a solution. They will not think about God anymore. Anybody who brings solution, okay. Any government that brings solution, okay. Even if that government is working with Satan, even that, pol if that politician is working with Satan, even if the scientist is working with Satan, nobody cares. All they want is a solution. But the solution of the world does not give eventual emancipation. The solution of the world is a palliative. The solution of the world does not remove the disease. The solution of the world will be to, to cure the symptom. The disease is in the side of man. The only people who are going to eventually make it, even into eternal life, are those who are serving the Lord. That's why Jesus says in John chapter 14, 19, he said, because I live, you shall also live. Our hope is not ending here. In the book of Psalm 20, verse number 7, the Bible says some people trust in their chariots and their horses, but we remember the name of the Lord our God. We remember that name that's called Wonderful. In Isaiah 9, 6, that name that is called the Counselor, the Prince of Peace, that name that is called the, the, the everlasting Father. That name that has been given to us, Jesus. Jehovah saves. God saves. This is why he speaks. You see, when Jesus says, cheer up or be of good cheers, he's not talking about the world. He's talking to you, the Christian. He's talking to you, the believer. That even in the circumstance, as bad as things are, 
as gloomy as things are. Even if the Antichrist will be revealed and we have not been taken out of this place, there is a way that God will set you free. Peter said, God knows how to deliver the righteous from temptations. You and your household, you shall be delivered. Our God is a provider. Philippians 4.19 says, He shall provide your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, there shall be hunger. But remember, there was a time. He sent a bird, a raven, to take food to Elijah. As Elijah was running away from Jezebel, 40 days he was running, and God sent a bird. No matter the condition, no matter where you are, I am saying to you by the word of the Lord, not by the word of men, not by my word, God will provide for you. He will also provide for me. God will protect your household in this circumstance. And I am saying to you by the word of the Lord, cheer up. This coronavirus will not see your house, will not see you, will not see your children. You will not lose anybody. This trouble that come shall still pass away. It will not affect you. It will not touch you. Let those who want to rule the world rule the world. We know who is our ruler. We know who is our God. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. But before he can reign in the world, he wants to reign in you. In this time, we are facing tribulations. Children, if you go to what Jesus was saying to us, uh, in the book of Matthew, look at this. He said, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. See that ye be not troubled means don't be perplexed. Don't suffer anxiety. Don't tremble. Don't permit fear to get the better part of you. Fear is not of God. The Spirit is given to us according to Paul, which is true. We experience it, everybody who is a Christian. In 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse 7, the Spirit God has given to us is not the spirit of fear. It's not the spirit of cowardliness. It is the spirit of boldness. The spirit of power. The spirit of love, charity filling our hearts in this circumstance. This is the time that every day when you awake from bed, from your bed, and you have done your prayer, say, Oh Lord, from my heart, I release goodwill to humanity. I release charity to humanity. You are a good God. You are a merciful God. Visit people with your goodness and mercy. In the nations, especially people who believe in you, people who are suffering because of the temptations they are facing, people who have been put in a corner because of persecutions, people who are hiding, people who are sick, even people who do not know you. Let your goodness, let your mercy come upon humanity. Show yourself in people's lives. Intervene and set people free. It is your responsibility because when you are on earth, you are the mouth of God. You are the hand of God. You are the feet of God. You have to pray for people. You have to prophesy in your house. I'm not saying go to television and prophesy so that everybody will see you and call you a bold prophet. You don't need to do that. You can stay in your home and speak the word. There's no time and space that can hinder the word spoken in the spirit. If you are in the spirit, you can stay in your home here in Nigeria. You can stay in your home in Canada. You can stay in your home in China and prophesy into the realm of the spirit and ask God to intervene in human lives. In this time of this trouble, in this time of this tribulation, 
Let your goodness come to people. Let your mercy come to people. And let me tell you, brother, let me tell you, sister, the angel of the Lord will take the word you spoken out of goodwill. When the, the angels came to the shepherds in Luke chapter number 2 and was announcing the birth of Jesus Christ, the Bible said, they, they said, peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Peace and goodwill, which means goodwill is important. When you pray from a heart of goodwill, Pray for nations. Pray for people who don't know Jesus and they want to know Jesus. Pray for people who are persecuted, especially in China. China is so important for you to understand that China, the national, the cultural symbol of China is the dragon. The dragon is going to pursue the Christians. As the dragon is doing today. And in Revelation chapter 12, the Bible calls the dragon, said that all happened, that devil, that all happened. Satan, the devil. So people in communist China, they hate God so much, they are breaking the crosses. They want to remove the picture of Jesus and put the picture of their prime minister, who has been given power to be a life, a, a monarch, to be a king, to rule forever. They are pulling down. They want to change scriptures. They want to remo remove the names of Jesus out of the Bible. They want to remove the names of God. They want to remove so many things. They want to rewrite their own Bible and give to the people of God to read. They don't want the word of God. So you can imagine that China, everybody who says child of God should put your eye on China. This problem came from China has entered into the Judeo-Christian nations. Starting with US, Italy, Spain, and people are dying, and people are just dying. And China is permeating the nations of the world with their economic power. Are we against them? No. We are just trying to let us know what the Bible has said before. That it is not about hating China. It is not about loving the U.S. It's not about hating or loving the European Union. It is about knowing the truth. So that you can run. So that you can run. Jesus said that these things will happen. And this trouble coming... China wants to take over the whole of Africa now. They want, they're buying lands. In every nation, especially in African nations, you have Chinatown. Many things they make, they are fake. You buy those things in your home, some equipment, in one day, it's all destroyed, it's blown up. You, you, you lose the money, you lose the equipment. They, have, they are lending money to our nations. How will the nations pay back? We are old people, and these young people I'm thinking about, how will they pay up? You see that there is a race to share the world. Men want to share the world that they have not created. When the Bible says in Psalm 2, he that is in heaven, laughs at them. He will laugh them to scorn. Jesus said these things will happen. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, in diverse places, all these are the beginning of sorrow. The beginning of sorrow is the beginning of tribulation. So we know there is going to be tribulations. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. So Christians are going to face afflictions. 
But in the face of all this, God says to us, Shiro, I have overcome the world. If you are in Christ, you are also an overcomer. Be bold to stand for righteousness. When things begin to change in the world, understand what God is saying so that you can save yourself. You don't get entangled and fall into their plots, their plans, their snares. Stand with God. Sometimes it may involve our heads. Know that our heads may be cut off. But also know that he that is in us is greater than the world system. That God knows how to save his people. You shall be saved in Jesus' name. These troubles will not overwhelm you. It will not destroy you. But know that a change is coming to the world. So many things will happen so fast. But they that wait on the Lord. In Isaiah 40, 31. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as the eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait on the Lord. I come with the word of the Lord to say to you, child of God, cheer up. The Lord has overcome the world. In him alone we have peace. In the world we shall have tribulation. We already have it. We shall have more. Stay in the Lord. May his power work righteousness for you. Anybody hearing the sound of my voice in the whole world. Things are changing. The Lord may come. If the Lord comes, do not be left behind. I should pray for yourself. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your household. Pray that people who serve God will not be left behind. Because it will be terrible in the rule of the Antichrist. He wouldn't wish even your enemy to be in the rule of the Antichrist. You wouldn't even wish your enemy to go to the lake of fire. This is not the time to have enemies. This is the time to have good will towards all men and ask that God remember the Lord said he who hates his brother is a murderer. He who hates does not have eternal life. But thank God he came to give us eternal life. If you have hate in your heart, receive healing in Jesus' name. May God fill your heart with love. If you have bitterness and anger and unforgiveness in your heart, may God heal you so that you may represent because the whole earth is crying. In Romans chapter 8, 19, crying to see the manifestation of the sons of God. People who have holy, uh, a pure heart. People who love others. People who work for the benefit of others. People who are waiting for the coming of Jesus. May the Lord find, find you faithful. If anybody is sick, we are commanding the sickness to leave your body in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter the sickness you have, anybody hearing the sound of my voice this moment, no matter the sickness you have, say I mean with me, believe with me as you're hearing the sound of my voice, that sickness is leaving you now in the name of Jesus Christ. If anybody is depressed, that spirit of depression is leaving you now in the name of Jesus. We command in the name of Jesus every contrary spirit tormenting any person here with sin or sickness or disease, we command you to leave that person. Leave that home 
anywhere in the world. Leave that home in the name of Jesus Christ. God's people, I command peace into your heart. I command healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ into your bodies, into your emotions, into your life, into your home, into your business, into your relationship. May the peace of God, because this God we serve, his name is called the Prince of Peace. May the Prince of Peace begin to reign in your heart, reign in your house, reign in your relationships, reign in your businesses. May the peace of God that passeth all understanding overwhelm you and uphold you and bless you and heal you in the name of Jesus Christ. As we keep waiting for the coming of the Lord, you are facing the circumstances that face the whole world. Do not be perplexed. Child of God, do not be perplexed. Do not be perplexed. Do not feel frustrated. Do not feel abandoned. God who came to save you has a plan for you. If God did not have a plan for you, he will not save you. If God had prepared you to be destroyed, then he wouldn't have bothered to save you. Why did he save you? He saved you that you may not, you may not be destroyed. I challenge you to every day renew your relationship with the Lord Jesus. Every day I said to him, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. Please, I open myself to you. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Be my personal Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit. Give me power to serve you in spirit and in truth. Then study the Bible. If in your nation, church is open, go to church. If you are in nations where they hate Christianity, some Middle East nations, some Asian countries where you have other religions, religions that do not support or recognize Christianity, stay in your home and serve the Lord. Every day say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in tongues. Some people don't believe in praying in tongues. Don't worry. God will see them through. You who understand, pray in tongues. Tongues bring bond. People are of the same tribe because they speak the same language. When you speak the language God gives, it brings you into a bond with God. Stay in your home and study the word. Those who quarrel, stop quarreling in your home. Stop quarreling with your wife, with your children, with your parents, with your husband. We do not know if the king of kings is coming now. So that if he comes, he doesn't leave you behind. If you are quarreling with your wife, make up now. If you are quarreling with your husband, Reconcile now. Those people who are not married, wait on the Lord. Don't grumble. This is not the time for grumbling. This is not the time for quarreling. This is the time to look up to him. Because our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. And if Jesus Christ delays his coming, still serve him and serve humanity. Make your plans in life as if Jesus is not going to come. But live every day as if today is the last day. This is how you get ready. Cheer up. May God give you favor. You, listening to me, everywhere you are, may God give you favor in the name of Jesus. May God give you favor in the sight of human beings. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God give you wisdom. May God also give you correction. May God teach you. Help you to be humble. And obedient to him. Listen to men of God. Who are teaching the truth. If they are not teaching the truth. 
turn off your phone or your television or whatever you're, you're using to listen to them. This is not a time of prophecy. You are going to be rich. You are not going to be rich. Your enemy will die. Your enemy will not die. This is the time to connect you to Jesus Christ. The true prophet tells you the word of God. The true prophet does not use the word of God to make a name for himself, to make money for himself, to show his face. We are not in competition with Jesus. We are his servants. And if you are a servant of God, don't begin to look at other ministries and say he has a better ministry. Nobody has a better ministry than you. Do what God has sent you to do. Do it humbly. Do it faithfully. What he will say to the big in our eyes is still what he will say to the small in our eyes. Because before him, all are equal. It is still good, um, welcome, good, and faithful servant. Welcome, good, and... He doesn't say welcome because you have 10,000 people. Welcome because you have 100 people. You are welcome because you are his true servant. Young men who are ministering nations, young women who are ministering nations, don't begin to look for money. God will provide for you. Teach the truth. Teach this truth. Teach this truth. Connect people to Jesus. Let them know the Lord. Let them be humble. Let them be holy. Let them be pure. Let them be prayerful. Let them stand for righteousness. If you are sincere, God will give you everything you need and much more than you need. And may it be so. Everybody hear the sound of my voice. May God bless you. I bring my goodwill to you and my love, and it is well. It shall be well with you. Shalom. Thank you. If you have been blessed by this message and you want to commit your life to Jesus Christ and place your faith in Him to be your Savior and Lord, say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sins to reconcile me back to God the Father. I confess my sin to you now, and please forgive me, and wash me in your precious blood. Come into my life now, and be my Savior and Lord. Sanctify me, and give me power to serve God, henceforth in spirit and in truth. Bless me, and use me to the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. For prayers and counseling, please call plus two three four eight zero three seven six four four one eight one or plus two three four eight zero six three seven five one five five nine. Again, plus two three four eight zero three seven six four. 4181 or plus 2348063751559 To order for this message and any other message by Pastor Festus Agu visit our bookshop at House of Praise Bible Church 18 Water Resources Road Efron Delta State Nigeria you can as well watch this message and any other messages by Pastor Festus Agu on facebook.com slash House of Praise Bible Church. You can worship in any of our branches throughout the country.